What's up everybody, welcome to We Do Tech. Now the cryptocurrency market has had a massive boom in 2017 and a lot of people are getting into it now. But it's still not really common knowledge on how it actually works and how you can get into the cryptocurrency market. This is where I wanted to make this video and a bunch of other ones where I explain how everything works and how you can get into cryptocurrencies yourself. I'm also going to make some other videos over mining, trading and selling cryptocurrencies, but also I'm going to make videos on how to build your own mining system and how to improve on your mining efficiency. But all of those videos are coming a bit later. Now, I have already made a bunch of videos on how to mine Bitcoin, Ethereum, Monero and a bunch of other coins. So I will leave the links in the video description for you to actually go and check out and already start if you wanted to. Now, because there's so much information about the cryptocurrencies, I'm not going to be able to go over everything in depth, unfortunately. This video is going to give you a basic understanding of what and how the cryptocurrencies work. And then when I go over certain topics, I will leave some links in the video description for you to actually go check out if you want to learn a bit more in depth about that certain topic. So you can just check those out as well. Now, in this video, I'm gonna talk about the cryptocurrencies, what they are, how how they work, how safe they are, and also how to obtain them. For the main example, we're going to take a look at Bitcoin because of course it's the most commonly used one and it's also the first and biggest cryptocurrency. But now we're going to get all into all of that right after this. Do you live in South Africa and want to get into the crypto mining world? Well, Rebeltic is the best place to get all of your mining hardware at extremely low prices. They have a massive range of graphics cards, motherboards and everything else you would need. So click on the link in the video description to go visit Rebeltic and start building your new mining system. Now, what is cryptocurrencies exactly? Well, in short, just like the name implies, cryptocurrencies uses cryptography, which is the art of writing or solving codes. This makes the cryptocurrency extremely secure and also it's not really controlled by anybody. With normal money, it's mostly controlled by the government and the banks. They decide how much to print and to give the money to as well. This can be really bad if not regulated properly. It can reduce the value of the currency to almost nothing, for example, like with Zimbabwe, where they just kept printing money, thinking that that would solve the economical problem. But in return, it actually reduced the value of their money to almost nothing. Just for example, they actually printed out a $100 trillion Zimbabwean uh, dollar note, which is almost worth nothing. So that just shows you guys how bad the inflation is actually. So this is where Bitcoin does not have that problem, luckily. But with cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, no one really controls it. Everything is open. You're able to see where every single Bitcoin is and has been since the day it was created. All of this information is stored on the ledger called the blockchain. But now because the blockchain keeps all of this information, you don't have to worry about people actually knowing that you own Bitcoins. It's totally anonymous, but we'll get into all of that a bit later when we go over the wallets. In the case of Bitcoin, the blockchain stores the details of every single transaction of the cryptocurrency and then also the technology stops the same Bitcoin from being spent more than once. So you can't have two of the same Bitcoins on the entire market, which helps keep it secure. Now, how it works is if you want to send a Bitcoin to somebody, the transaction is represented online as a block. The block then is broadcast to every single party on the network and once approved by the network that it is legit the block will then be added to the blockchain that keeps all of the information about the transactions and then it actually goes through to the person who wanted to receive it now sending bitcoins is not instantly the speed depends on a few things firstly the size of the transaction the more bitcoins you send the longer it is going to take also it depends on the hash rate of the network which depends on the miners which we'll get into a bit later as well and then also it depends on the, your wallet or the exchange on what regulations they have usually it takes anywhere between one hour to 24 hours depending on all of those factors 
Bitcoin is also able to be split into even a 100 millionth of a single Bitcoin. So you don't have to own a single full Bitcoin. You can have, for example, a 0.001 Bitcoin and it'll still be worth a lot of money. Now, again, cryptocurrencies use cryptography to send and receive transactions. This means it's extremely safe, but you're also going to have the hardware power needed to handle all of that. This is where mining comes in. Mining is the process of solving mathematical equations, which in turn then rewards you for solving the equation. But now, the more people who get into crypto mining, the harder it is to mine. For example, cryptocurrencies underneath Bitcoin like Ethereum, Monero, and Zcash, you are able to mine by just using your relatively powerful gaming computer. But Bitcoins, however, is not that easy. Because so many people has already started mining it, their difficulty has increased a lot. And now for a long time, you are not able to mine Bitcoins with normal hardware. For that, you are going to need an ASIC miner, that is a device dedicated to mining a certain algorithm for a cryptocurrency. Now, something to keep in mind is that there are only a fixed amount of Bitcoins to be ever created. Currently, there's already 16.7 million Bitcoins that have been mined till date, but there are a fixed amount at only 21 million, so it is going to run out quite soon. Don't worry, you're not going to lose your Bitcoins when it reaches that price and it's not mineable anymore, but you will only be able to trade it, however. This entire limited design of Bitcoin was to target Hashi Nakamoto's, the creator of Bitcoin's plan to resemble the limited resources like gold. So there is only a set amount which in turn will probably increase the value of Bitcoin quite a lot, but we will first have to wait and see when that day actually comes. I will go into more details about ASIC miners in a later video and again I will also make a dedicated video on how to build your own mining system and then also how to mine all of the different coins. So we'll get into that a bit later. But now we're gonna get to the blockchain. In the background while you are mining, you're actually helping keeping the blockchain running. It is by handling the Bitcoin transactions and also checking that there's no cheating going on. This is because the blockchain is one huge network with millions of systems actually handling everything. So if one system gets hacked or something goes wrong with it, there is still millions more to go. So if one fails, you don't have to worry about actually everything falling apart. This makes Bitcoin almost unhackable, but that does not mean cryptocurrencies cannot be stolen. But firstly, let's take a look at what wallets are. So wallets are kind of self-explanatory. It is the place where you would keep your cryptocurrencies, either holding them for future use or holding them to be traded or sold on an exchange. When creating a wallet, you will get your wallet address, depending on the cryptocurrency. It will have numbers and letters that will make up your wallet address. You will use this address just like you would use your account number from the bank. When receiving cryptocurrencies, you will send your wallet address to the person that's actually sending you the bitcoins or the other uh, currencies or you would add your address into the miner that is going to mine the cryptocurrencies for you. To send Bitcoins, however, you actually just have to do the exact opposite. You get the person's address and then you just add it into your wallet and do the transaction. Now keep in mind, this is where it's almost like a bank. The creator of the wallet will ask you a fee for sending cryptocurrencies in exchange. They will have security to help keep the cryptocurrencies safe. But this is not always the case. Exchanges and wallets are usually the locations where cryptocurrencies are stolen. It doesn't happen a lot, but occasionally it does happen. Anything that is online can be hacked, so just to be safe. But now if you want the most secure way to keep your cryptocurrency safe, then you have to go into a hardware wallet or a paper wallet. Now a hardware wallet is a device, most of the time it resembles like a flash drive. When you want to use it, you connect it into your computer, you do your transactions, you send and receive your currencies, and then after you've done, you just plug it out and then just keep it safe somewhere. This prevents hackers from actually getting access to your wallet because 95% of the time, is not going to be connected to the internet. So this is a nice way of keeping your money safe. 
But of course, you just have to actually make sure as well that your computer does not have any viruses because otherwise it could be a different story. The next up is the paper wallet. And just like the name implies, it's actually a paper with your wallet and address and all of the details on. With it, you can receive cryptocurrencies and send them once you have connected back to the blockchain. The paper wallet is a big risk, however, because if something goes wrong, you will lose everything. But you can also lock it up in a safety deposit box and just keep it there for safety, which you can also do with the hardware wallet. Now, something that has been becoming more and more popular is for pirated websites or just some other websites to actually crypto jack your computer. What this means is when opening up the page, a script will run that will actually use your own CPU of your computer to start mining Monero. This isn't a huge deal really, but it will slow down your computer a lot and might even damage it. So just be mindful of that. Now for the last two topics, we are quickly going to take a look at the different ways you can obtain cryptocurrencies and then also the different cryptocurrencies there are. To obtain cryptocurrencies, there's mostly only three ways of actually getting them. The first one is by mining, of course, which we have already covered. You just use your computer to uh, run a program, it mines for you, and then also you do have the ASIC miners that just does the same, but at higher level. Then for the second option is trading. Uh, mostly it works exactly like the stock market where you buy at a low point and sell at a high point. You can do a quick trade or buy and keep them for a long-term investment as well. Now, the third way of actually obtaining cryptocurrencies is by cloud mining. Now, it's almost the exact same process as normal mining, but instead of you using your own hardware, which will in turn, you have to actually buy it first, it's gonna use up electricity, it's gonna get hot. Instead of that, you actually rent other people's systems. So a big example of this is Hashflare, where you can actually rent out the space. You get a certain amount of hashes per second, which then in turn will in turn a mine the cryptocurrencies for you it's not as profitable as just normal mining yourself but it is an additional op option if you live in a small house and if you don't want to buy all of the hardware now like we all know bitcoin is the biggest and most widely known of all the cryptocurrencies but there are however other thousands of different cryptocurrencies that you can get into. Some are mineable like Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Zcash, whereas some you can only buy on the market, which is like Ripple, Waves, and NXT. All of them have a different approach, and that's actually what makes cryptocurrencies and the blockchain so interesting. Now, example of how we can actually use the cryptocurrencies and the blockchain to do more favorable stuff for a lot of people is, for example, uh, we can have a big supercomputer. Now, because you're using your own system to mine, you're actually renting out your hardware for somebody else to calculate certain equations. This is possible to actually solve other mathematical equations like for instance uh, doctors that wants to solve uh, cancer for example if they have a big formula that they have to solve instead of renting out a supercomputer they can do this on the on a blockchain and they can actually solve the problem because all of the people are pitching in using their, their hardware to help solve a problem this is just one example of how we can actually use the entire cryptocurrency market to just help improve on the world now, I don't know all of the limitations, everything of the blockchain and cryptocurrencies and everything, but this is a way for us to actually just move forward and just embrace everything we have because this is a really, really cool technology we have at the moment. But anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. I really do hope you guys enjoyed it and it helped you to just understand a bit more of how the entire cryptocurrency market works. Like I said before, I am going to make more videos on how to actually mine cryptocurrencies. I'm going to show you guys how to build your own system to mine. I'm going to go over some of the ASIC miners. I want to go over cloud mining as well, trading, all of that. So stay tuned, subscribe to the video and I'm going to do all of those videos for you guys but if you guys just want to jump into mining already you can just again follow the links in the video description
description where you can mine ethereum zcash and monero and a bunch more so i'll just leave the links in the video description for you there but anyway that's again that's pretty much it thanks for watching guys if you did enjoy this video please like share comment comment like always also yeah again please subscribe and i'm gonna make a lot more videos for you guys and yeah that's pretty much it so thanks for watching guys and i will check all of you next time cheers guys